Well, like I said in a recent short, this is something totally new to me. As a matter of fact, there's very little information I can find on it, no matter how much I look, other than the fact that it's an Olympic radio record player. You can see. Uh, it looks like it was made in 1942. Of course, it's made of beautiful solid wood. There's some, as you can see, there's some damage to the trim pieces, a little bit here and there. But in general, hey, the plastic isn't broke here, which usually happens because this this kind of stuff usually dries out pretty bad and just becomes very brittle. The cord has been replaced because I doubt this just doesn't look like it's probably the, the original cord. But what it does do is turn it on. I don't know if you can see it from there, I don't know if you saw, but uh, lights come on for the dial. You wait till it warms up. Getting a buzz. So that sounds to me, like I said, this is more of the purview of uh, Mr. Carlson's lab, but I'll take a shot. But it sounds to me like the amplifier is working, or I wouldn't be able to do that with the volume. But you don't hear a single thing, no change in no static, all you hear is the buzz. So I think there's something wrong with the tuner circuit or the tuner tube. So we'll shut her down and we'll take the back off and see what we've got. Okay. There's a little flat blade screws here. The motor and attached fan for the uh, record player. And at least it's all on a, that's one good thing about the old days. It's all on a metal platform. I just have to unbolt it, make sure there's nothing on the front that I probably need to unscrew all the knobs, and then I should be able to slide it out. All right, now that I've got the turntable power switch unhooked, let's see if I can get this out in one piece. You have a huge box, and still, it's hard to get out because it's a tight fit above and below. There we go. I think I got it. And there we are. Yeah, got a torn speaker here. Try to glue that carefully. At least it's not missing pieces or anything. Also noticed, look at this. Look at the tuning capacitors. They're on a heavy tilt. Maybe that's why. See, right here, it's been shoved down. It's like it's actually been torn before. Almost in several directions, but it sure isn't supposed to be pointing down like that. I'm going to have to see if I can fix that. 
this in a safe spot. Here's where the uh, tone arm plugs into. This is where the uh, motor plugs into for the turntable. Here's the turntable switch. I got a transformer mounted directly to the speaker. That's why I got a savage speaker. I'd like to keep that. It's kind of interesting. Now, you know what we need to do is to plug it in and see off the see if. Uh, all the tubes visibly heat up. Okay, it's plugged in. Let me see what happens to the heaters on the tube. See if they all light up. Sometimes you can't tell unless you feel them because of the, the reflective uh, burn off that's on the top. I see several of them glowing. This one, I can tell for sure. I don't know if you guys can see or not. This one, this one's definitely. This one took a while to light up. I don't see anything on this one. One. Should be. It's getting hotter. That one's already hot. Well, that's got a heater that's really roaring in it. We're all getting hot, but it's stone cold. Well, I'm going to pull that tube and see what it is and see. I have some tubes, not a ton, but uh, see if I got a replacement. Well, I took a look and I actually have a 12SK7. It's not the glass tube one, but it's the same, uh, the same tube at the pentode. So let's see what we can see. Line up the you can see if how to salvage this diagram. And it is warming up. So that did need replacing, but I don't hear, let me try to tune it or see if there's any kind of change. It sure doesn't sound like it. Underneath, well, you can see one thing that I see. These definitely aren't original. Somebody's been in here and did a repair once before. Who knows how long ago? All right, next I want to check some voltages on these on the tubes. Uh, let's see. We'll start with I've got. I don't know if this is the exact schematic. It's been tough to find one, but this looks is about as close as I can find. It should work decently. So here's tube 50L6 right there. And it looks like pin 3 should have, I know it's a little tough to see, but pin 3 should have what looks to be like 79 volts on it. So I'm going to check that. That's this tube right here. I'll be around just a touch. There we go. Pin 3, let's see. 1, 2, 3, here. 85. So that pin's got voltage. Let's see, next tube would be the 12SQ7. I've got a, a one that's slightly different, but it's a little clearer. But it should be the same setup. 
SQ7. Looks like pin 6 has 55 volts on it. So let's see what pin 6 of SQ7 is. Pin right here. 53. So that's it. That's got voltage on that tube. Good deal. All right. Next tube over 12. 12 SK7. Looks like me. I'm using a magnifying glass to try to get this. Looks like another 55 volts. Should be, since it's going across that IF tuner coil, it should be. Looks like either 55 or 85 volts on pin 6 and on pin 8. Right there. Since it's going across that coil, the voltages between these two pins should always be the same. Well, let's, let's find out. So, 6 and 8, you say. Okay, here's pin 6. Okay, 89. That's been an 85 on there. So that's pin 6, and this one should be the same, pin 8. Yep, 89 volts. Okay, next, on the 12 SK7, should be the same thing between pins, pins 3 and 4. They do the same thing. They'll go across the, an IF coil. So pins 3 and 4 should both have, looks like the same thing, like 85 volts. Since it's going across the IF coil, it should be the same voltage as here and here. So let's see. That, like I said, let's, that is pins 3 and 4 on 12SA7. 12 SA7 is this guy right here. <laughs> One in the back. Pins 3 and 4. Let's see. 1, 2, 3. Here's pin 3. Say what? What's pin 4 say? Well, it's got the 89 volts on pin 4. Let's try pin 3 again. That ain't got nothing. Okay, let's take a shot at something here. We turn this off. We unplug it just to be sure. Between those two pins, since it's going across the coil in the schematic, it's going across the coil in the schematic, Sorry, pins 3 and pins 4 are basically connected just through this coil. So, checking for resistance between these two pins should come up with a few ohms. Let's find out. Let's see. Hang on. Hmm. See pin pins three and four. One, two, three. Pin three. Pin four. Nothing. Uh huh. Well, I think we found some sort of problem. That means either the wiring to the IF coil up there is screwed up, broken somewhere between the tube and the coil. Or the wiring in the coil itself is faulty. Let's find out what it is. Finally found the problem. I got the metal cover off. And off camera, I have just been examining, examining. Because you've got to be so careful with these, these whisker-thin wires. But take a look right here. He's broken. <sighs> now the real trouble is trying to see if I can fix it. I have a chance of 
finding what's left, unspooling a, a tiny section and putting it back up to here. I'm going to go in very carefully with a razor blade, scrape off the wax, see if I can grab a hold of that wire and see what happens. I'm afraid I'll have to do it off camera because you're just too much in the way right now. Sorry. This that broke is the outer part of the coil, so I undid one winding and soldered it up to here. And here I'll show you. Now, I'll show you. Now when I measure across this coil at the tuning cap, it also is just a few ohms like it's supposed to be. So it's a solid coil again. Got a pretty good connection. So let's put the tin back on it, put the tubes back in, and take a shot see what happens. Tubes back in, everything's put back together, cans back on the IF transformers. Let's see, uh, let's see what we've got. Tubes are heating up. How about that? Of course, it now, sounds very distorted because we've got to fix the speaker, but we have got. We have got reception. That is great. My first tube repair. Okay. Next things to fix are the speaker. And as you can see, those tuning capacitors, the whole sandwich is at a tilt, which has caused the needle to be down. It's damaged something here. We'll take off the plate. We'll uh, check the mounting on those and see if we can get that straightened out. Oh, and of course, we're going to have to actually tune now that we've got reception. I'm sure it's way out of tune. Okay, what I managed to get is some sink valve washers that are just the right thickness. Get rid of the old cork. Drill a hole in the uh, in the washer a little bigger than it was, just enough to get the metal support through. So let's here's the last one I've already done too. Gosh, this cork is hard as a rock. Support. Build out washer. It's like so. Now we've got a nice new support, at just the right height for these guys. You know, it's, the units are the unit is grounded, of course, to the frame, so you don't have to worry about isolation from the. Uh, frame for this it just needs it's basically just vibration support so one get in there sorry if my hands in the way I can't see I think it's two I think I got the back one in yeah and uh, let's see, three, there we go. The one that caused all this in the first place. The blade, a little debris where the old cork has sat for many decades, except I need, like they did, on the bottom side where the screw is, 
another small washer. Hold on. Small rubber flat washer there. See how the central mounting post also sticks through there, the middle part. So I have to drill a hole for this big enough so that can fit over top like so. There we go. Got a bite. All right. I'd rather do too little than too much, so we'll leave it at that. I'm closing out shop for the night. I'll be back in the morning, which to you will be a couple minutes, and we'll take a look. I may let that dry, push around on it tomorrow and see if there's any of it that I missed. But we'll see. All right, see you in the morning. Okay, it's the next day. As you can see, speaker repairs seem to be dry. Let's see if we've gotten rid of all that horrible vibration that the tears caused. And yes, I know I noticed that I seem to have lost my bulb there on that. Get anything. But to be an eyesore into a place of absolute beauty. Mingle like as a fire. That with a crowd. But it's a wedding supper of the Lamb. Then in a voice like the voice of a great multitude. Much better. To walk into the planetarium. It's, it's amazing. It start you're in a room where... Much, much better. Next, I'm going to tune, roughly tune, these two IF transformers. There's two capacitors here, two trimmer capacitors in each one and tune them roughly to try to get the strongest signal. And when I say rough, rough and dirty, I mean it. All I'm going to do is tune it to the weak, weakest signal I can find and, uh, and then start adjusting these until I can get that signal as strong as I can get. That is very quick and dirty. It's not the way to do it. I was thinking about showing you how to tune that with you know, a signal generator and everything. Uh, say as Mr. Carlson does, but it hit me that, you know, I try to show that my channel is somebody who does not have the en enormous knowledge base of, say, a vacuum tube radio or an old computer and just reason it out and fix it yourself. Um, I tried to make this more of a you can do it too kind of channel with just thinking it through a couple of schematics and be able to say I can't believe I got that fixed which is the way I think about this radio here I've never repaired anything with vacuum tubes before I'm pretty I'm pretty doggone pleased take a listen I had to bring it into the house because there's so much interference out in my shop that it makes it sound horrible but in here it warm up. Definitely got a slow warm up. There we go. Remember the past is just run all over them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. It lives. Like 523 yards or something. We've got to be able to do that this year. I'm going to say... Well, holier than thou. So it never occurred to me that Alcoholics Anonymous was filled with people who had drank like I did, and now we're just... No. I have... This, remember, this only has AM, so this is a... ...for today, but on the chilly side, a high of 40 degrees for this tomorrow. This is a, a tone I control. ...38 degrees with dry skies. I'm WLKY meteorologist Susie Ann Porter. Now I'm going to split this video into two, so I'm closing this one down right now because I'm waiting for uh, two or three days for some parts for the second floor here because this too has its problems. But you know what? I think we're going to be able to fix it, believe it or not. So stick with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're so inclined. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you.